John Abang, the Commission of Police in Anambra State, has confirmed the death of four police officers and two injured during the recent NSAS protests in the state by hoodlums. Seventeen suspected hoodlums were also paraded during the briefing. He said 11 police stations were burnt down, six vandalized, and about 20 vehicles were raised, including an armored personnel carrier and patrol vehicles. The commissioner, who applauded his men, said the lives of police officers in the state were still in danger. And uh, joining us to quickly share her thoughts on this is Priscilla Usiobaifo, uh, the founder, executive director, Brave Heart Initiative for Youth and Women. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning. Good morning. All right, I'm, I'm going to, you know, start with um, you sharing exactly what your work is about, um, how much, you know, you've been able to dedicate into service in the last few years um, um, across the country. Okay, um, thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning. Um, Brave Arts Initiative is um, a youth-led, youth-focused, non-governmental organization situated at Igara. Igara is in a cocoa Edo local government area of Edo State, and we've been working to promote young people's sexual reproductive health and advance women's rights in the country. Um, in the past eight years, we've invested a lot in direct interventions in cases of sexual and gender-based violence. And um, so far, we've been able to intervene in over 200 cases. Hmm. All right, Priscilla, I mean, with what you do, obviously you work hand in hand with, you know, um, law enforcement agencies, like also the police. I'm wondering with what has happened over the course, uh, co you know, the previous days, how has that impacted on your work um, as an organization or an NGO, so to speak? Um, first, when the protest started, I was one of the persons that said, you know, it's more of even police brutality, not a specific unit, because I've had my own fair share of um, harassment and even assault from police officers in the course of my work. And in the past few years, we've been able to move from the face we used to be to um, an improved working relationship with the police because I follow the pattern of project alerts to look at some of the institutional gaps and challenges that the police had, especially as regards um, investigation and administrative um, logistics that they had challenges with, and we decided to support them in those areas. And we are seeing progress, tangible progress, when I mean significant progress, being made with our working relationship with the police. Basically, I would like to focus on the outcome of um, the hijack. I want to use the word hijack because um, it's obvious that it wasn't the protestant that um, went to the prison for the prison break in Edo State. And we were fortunate to have two of our prisons um, broken into and most of the inmates released. Um, we have two of those inmates directly related to the work that we do. One of them is Jacob Alunge, who was convicted and um, sentenced to 21 years imprisonment. For those of you that don't know the Jacob's case, Jacob Alunge's case involved the young girl, Gift Alunge, who was his biological daughter and was sexually violated for years by Jacob, got impregnated. And while that case was on, the prosecution was on, um, Gift Alunge, alongside two of my senior program officers, Promise Ezekiel, Rhoda Braimo, and Gift Uncle. We are heading from Igara to Benin City on a court day, and they had an accident, and they all died. Hmm. Now, oh. Jacob was sentenced to 21 years. He had barely spent up to two years in the prison, and he escaped during that... Um, um, prison break. We had a second inmate that was also related to our work. Um, he, um, he assaulted a young girl during the earlier months of COVID in Edo State and was on remand. So he was awaiting trial there when the prison break also happened. We are yet to hear from both of them. Uh, we've tried to reach the prison authority to look at their inventory 
to confirm whether they left that day or they were part of the ones that returned because the governor gave opportunities to some of them that wanted to come back to do so. Uh, we are hoping that by Monday, uh, we would have gotten a tangible feedback. Now, how does it affect our work? The first thing that set in was anxiety. Mm -hmm. Anxiety from my team and anxiety from their victims. We were scared of possible backlash. And I think if you have been following the news, you would have heard or some of these convicts or inmates who were in the prison, because some of them were actually awaiting trial, who we assumed we were going to run very far away from the communities, but they actually went back to communities in search of their victims, in search of um, key witnesses in their case, to either even assault them or murder them. So we, the first three days, we were actually living in utmost fear. Um, we got um, support. There were some donor agencies who were willing to give us um, a grant for maybe like safety. But I had to turn it down because I was like, even if I run to somewhere for the past next two weeks, I'm not even sure how long these people are going to be in hiding. So will I, be, will I also be in a safety net for the many years of my life? So I just had to face it boldly. We are brave at it and we have reopened the office. We are shut down for like four days to have like a safety and security plan um, on how to address it. So, so in what what next? Um, while you're, of course, hoping that the Edo State Government um, and its efforts, you may also speak on that. The Edo State Government and its efforts to um, recapture these uh, uh, convicts and take them back to jail. Um, you also, you've just stated that you, of course, live in in some level of fear. Um, but what next with regards to the fight against uh, gender-based violence and, um, you know, assault? Uh, would you also continue working and hope that there is other correctional facilities and police stations that can attend to these cases? Because the work obviously doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, we shut down the office on Monday. Immediately we had about that. We opened on Friday. And by Saturday night, there was a fresh case. A six-year-old had been sexually assaulted in N1 community in Akoko Edu local government. And by Sunday morning, we started intervening in that case again. So we are not stopping. Even with um, the apathy we saw from some of the police officers um, during that week, because some of them actually saw it as we being vindictive and I'm coming after them, I mean the protesters and the whole idea of the protest. Even when I wasn't physically out in the field during the protest, many of the police officers assumed that definitely I was the one quelling some of those issues because I've also had my fair share with them. But in all honesty, the police have been very supportive. They um, are intervening in the current case. It's even the community and the family that are actually withdrawing police are putting in their best efforts to ensure that the suspect is arrested. Uh, one of the police officers accompanied the girl to the health facility where the medical examinations were conducted. And our work with the police just continue. Um, also, for the record, most of our um, convict, convict facilitated convicts are actually in the Aochim Correctional Center. So it was just those two that were in Benin because their cases uh, were handled in Benin City. So we actually asked, also had to reach out to the correctional center in Aochi because that's where uh, we have most of them to find out whether they've been able to boost up security, which they confirmed they have. Mm -hmm. For us in the organization, our board of trustees are very concerned. So we are devising measures of reducing this tension. You know, our mental health and mental well-being. You can claim to be strong out there, but if you are still living in anxiety, then it's something you also need to address. So we are going to be having outdoor games. We'll be seeing therapists to ensure that uh, we are fine. Then finally, we have some community structures. I may not go into details, but we have put in structures in place um, and measures in place such that if any of these two inmates come back to their communities, community actors are going to hand them over to the police. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Priscilla, I mean, our thoughts and prayers are with you. You have really painted a quite a scary scenario there, indeed, with all of this revelation, and we, we are hoping that things will work out well, as you have said. But before we let you go, you talked about the strategy that you are putting in place. I'm wondering, do you have a long-term strategy such that if this kind, if there's a repetition of this kind of things, you would know what to do and what to fall back on? 
Of course, um, first we look at precedent. We had to ask ourselves from the previous record of jailbreak, either in the country or around the world, what's the percentage of um, the inmates that normally comes back on their own? What's the percentage that don't even go on that day because we, we are told some of them actually stayed back? What's the percentage that the community will be able to turn on, turn in? What's the percentage that the police will apprehend? So when you look at all these statistics, you discover that many of them will be escaped for a lifetime. So we have presented that to the board. We hope that the board will come back with their resolution. And don't forget in all of this, the rape victims themselves, the survivors themselves. So we are not just looking at keeping ourselves safe. We are looking at also our survivors who arrive there in the community. Because these survivors, we are already happy that justice has been served. The rapist is out of the community. So beyond even the rapist coming back to harm the survivor, the news of you hearing that this survivor that you thought the government is punishing is now set free, in quotes, because they broke free, not really set free by sin. So all those have been communicated to the board and we await their resolutions. So we hope that as we are planning for 2022, all this will fit into the current strategic plan document that we are developing as an organization. You know, one, one of the you know interesting parts of you know some of the things that you've said is the fact that you still have a great relationship with the police yes. force um, there in Edo State, even with the challenges, and um, you've been able to have, you know create a good working relationship. So I'm hoping that that continues um, all the way as they try to get back um, their facilities and get themselves back on their feet. Uh, but I really want you to speak on the Alonge family. Are there still any members of the family that are um, in Edo State? Um, what, what is their you know, mindset like uh, currently? What are they dealing with? Okay, so for gifts, um, the mother wasn't, um, she had some mental health challenges. So we've not even seen her for over a year. So we couldn't reach her. The only family that we could reach as at that time was the uncle's wife, who is currently a widow. As an officer, we rendered some sub, sort of support to her, and we plan to visit her on the 31st, that's um, in a few days' time, to ask her um, how she feels with this current situation in the prison. All right. Um, Priscilla El you, you do such great work, and uh, we really just hope that you know you continue to be strong and um, mentally mostly mm -hmm. to continue to do the things that you do and um, you know protect those lives and and um, hopefully also the Edo state government will be able to do what is necessary to get those people back um, behind bars uh, thank you so much for you know this conversation mm -hmm. and for sharing your thoughts with us and do keep safe out there as well thank you too <laughs>